So this is my new pillar drill. It's a start right bantam. <coughs> it's probably about as old as I am, if not older. Uh, but it's a solid bit of kit, um, and I'm really looking forward to getting into the workshop and using it. There are a few things you might notice that might be missing on mine. Um, one of the biggest issues is I've got no uh, rise and fall table on mine. Everything seems to be linked to the fact that the whole motor assembly at the top goes up and down. And one of the biggest issues with the machine, as old as this, is yes it's brilliant quality and it's solid as, uh, but it weighs a tonne. So one of the issues I've got at the moment is lifting the head up and down for adjustment and also for the fact that the base section is set up for uh, precision metal work. So the plan is to modify and come up with some alterations and what I'm going to try and do is show you a lot what I'm going to do to my pillar drill, how I'm going to modify it, um, try and put some plans up for you, uh, uh, share the ideas and uh, see what you think at the end of it. So comments are welcome as you go through, any feedback would be great and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So as you can see the adjustment on my drill is all done on the side and the weight lifts the unit up and down on the side here. Now it's fairly easy to do by hand but actually uh, fine adjustment anything like that is not easy. Uh, the base part as well, I've loosened the bolts on here uh, in this section will lift off and I'm going to make uh, a more wood based uh, precision uh, jig mounting section at the bottom of the drill press table. The idea is that will slot onto there. I need to have a look at the guard and tidy up the guard as well. But apart from that, the unit is in pretty good solid condition. Uh, so the first plan is how the hell am I going to get it to go up and down with all that weight at the top. So this is where I found this little puppy. This is a vintage um, screw jack from about the 1930s or 40s. And uh, one of the reasons I picked it out is that it adjusts using a rotary motion that moves up and down. Right, so now at the moment it's a little bit tired and it's going to need a bit of TLC. I've soaked it in um, penetrating oil. Uh, that's helped release a lot of it, but there's some more work to do, so I need to take it to the workshop, get the oxyacetylene on it, and separate the last few sections. But that's going to sit behind the motor assembly. And that's hopefully going to lift uh, the drill up and down. Now I hit one minor problem. I did a test fit with the jack out of my car, and the jack will lift the drill. The downside is, at the moment, it also pushes the drill forward. So I need to be able to sandwich the jack between the base and the um, um, motor in order to be able to jack it up and down safely. Which is where this comes in. I made this oh, about a year ago in order to sit over the top of the skybox in our house so that the kids didn't stand on it when it was on the floor. And it's been brilliant but don't need it anymore. And it was going to waste sitting in the corner of the workshop and I thought if I could sit the drill on top of that and bolt the drill down to that I reckon I could sit the motor, uh, the jack out the back and hopefully be use it to sandwich the jack between the drill and the base. So as you can see, it does fit onto the wooden base, but on its own with all that weight on it, it's going to need some reinforcing. So I'm going to put a spine up the middle to support it along the length of the, the wooden base. And then I'm going to, almost like a set of ribs, come across it. Uh, I'm going to modify it as well. I'm going to cut a hole in the middle underneath the fixings so that I can change the uh, drill platform for different jigs and templates, depending on what I'm going to put on there in the future. Um, only downside is uh, that the um, jack doesn't quite fit on the back, so I'll show that in a second. So you probably can't quite tell at the moment, but it doesn't quite uh, fit on the back of the wooden template. So I'm going to have to extend out the back very slightly. Um, and long term, the plan is, well short term, to put a big cog on the side on here so that I can adjust this and manage it. You can see it just lifts it off the back at the moment, but it does raise and lower it crank, uh, but long term I'm going to get hold of a motor, connect it up and then have it controlled on the switch. So actually this keeps it nice and straight, the reason I went for the screw jack is that there are no other forces other than vertical up and down. It should give me the motion that I want. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to get the bits together and then show you the next stage. So hopefully in this video I'm going to show you making the base and joining the jack to it. And then in other videos I'll show you making my drill platform and other modifications as we go. 
ਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ One of the next jobs to sort out was the handle. Now, I've cheated a little bit 
I have um, <coughs> used the resources I've got at work. So I've used our laser cutter. Uh, and I've produced the handle on here and I've designed it as such that it's a nice wide grip for turning, but I can also get fingers in there for a, a narrower turn as well. Uh, I've measured up everything and I've uh, ordered up aluminium to fit inside, which I've got here, 22mm square aluminium. And the idea is that should then go and fit on to the handle. <coughs> Now, the only minor thing is, if I was doing this myself, if I was doing it without the use of a laser cutter, I would have drawn it all out on the wood and then used the band saw, fret saw, scroll saw to cut out all the pieces and done it by hand. <clears throat> if you draw a circle, nicely around there, you could have drilled out each one of these. As I did the CAD drawing, I made it nice and easy. It could be done by hand as well. So you could just print out the drawing and then stick it onto the wood and then cut it out piece by piece with all the centres marked. Now I have one minor issue which I need to take over and show you. When I was doing my measuring I broke my own rules and when I always say measure twice cut once I ordered the material and I swear I measured that at 22 mil in order to fit there. So I need to adjust the aluminium on this at one end, take a smidge off to uh, make it fit. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to use my Sorby Pro Edge to grind it down. So, and if by magic, <coughs> it should now mean I'm going to turn this around. Just like that. There's the handle on. I'm going to crank that off there. Let's zoom out a little bit. So what you should hopefully see now is my ability to turn and crank that really easily. And how I've got working uh, up down motion on my drill press without having to crank up the body all by itself. The only thing I might do is pack out uh, where it's a little bit loose with some tape around the aluminium bar, and I might put a block just underneath the jack to raise it up very slightly. And that's it, job done. Uh, hopefully in the next few videos um, you'll go through and I'll show you uh, my drill press table that I'm working on. I've got a, a bit of a keen project on that one. Uh, I've also got some other mods and add-ons I'm going to add on to this drill as well. Bring it up hopefully <coughs> to a precision item. So if you've enjoyed the video like it, share it. Um, if you've got any questions or anything you want to point out I'm always up for a question. Um, yeah. Hope you enjoy it.